For those of you thinking, hang on, I've seen this video before, let me take you on a brief journey through the Kafkaesque nightmare horrorscape known as YouTube's copyright appeal system. One day, a man was asked by a group of strangers on the internet whether he'd film himself painting toy soldiers, which sounds super weird in hindsight, but was actually not weird. He decided to paint his models in a boat, and to elevate the whole project, he made a tongue-in-cheek arrangement of the Pirates of the Caribbean theme. It received a copyright notice, as if the Pirates of the Caribbean remix was actually a song called Out of Nowhere, the single version. It seemed like a straightforward thing to remedy, he'd simply appeal and flag with Sony that it was not the song Out of Nowhere. But fun fact, no. The man was loath to remove the video given it had so many lovely comments from some wonderful people around the community. But he hoped that maybe when they came back, they'd like the video again to help out. He was confident that they definitely would because they'd have to be assholes not to. Earlier this year, I agreed to participate in a Middle Earth content creators community challenge. That led me to the Grand Union Canal where I'd be attempting to paint a full warband of Middle Earth's favorite fantasy pirates, the Corsairs of Umbar. The challenge started with a video call, in which each participant was randomly assigned a force from the skirmish version of Middle Earth strategy battle game, Battle Companies. They were then given a pair of colours which were nominated by other players, and they had to form the primary basis of the colour scheme for the warband. I was assigned Corsairs of Umbar in black and yellow, used that I took with my signature good grace. <laughs> said Facebook, it's the one colour. This is why I didn't stake my claim to a particular gang of you were coming up. <laughs> He did say, the one colour I don't want is yellow. I would need some help with this challenge, so it was time to pick up Graham, head to a car park near Milton Keynes to meet up with Chris, and then get ready to set sail. Thank you very much both for joining today, um, this Battle Camper adventure. Chris, you might remember a while ago we spoke about what we wanted to do mm. uh, for this multi creator collaboration we should try and do a boaty theme and we thought let's try and rent ourselves a boat for the weekend three days of battle boat a boat out on the like the Norfolk Broads or on the Grand Union Canal uh, you know we can get a nice place to sleep and it's a nice little alternative to the van and we can do three days of chill painting in beautiful countryside but um, I can't I couldn't afford to rent a boat it would cost about 500 pounds so we set up a little fundraiser on uh, Buy Me A Coffee and we said, well, we'll put up the fundraiser in my video, which I did, and we'll have a target of 500 pounds, which I set on the um, on, on the, the page, and we'll get to 500 pounds and we'll, we'll rent ourselves a boat. Sounds like a plan. Good stuff. We didn't get to 500 pounds. <laughs> Damn. Uh, we didn't get there. Damn. Uh, we, we got to 9% of our goal. We got 45 pounds. <laughs> um, so thank you very, very much indeed to, uh, to thanks to Tim, to Sean, and to Tom, who donated, and to a mystery donator. Um, very, very grateful, but you all all failed spectacularly. Together, we failed spectacularly, and we've had to downgrade our expectations. So, this is what your hard-earned cash bought us. The wonderful uh, and luxurious Challenger 2, allegedly two-person inflatable raft. This will be <laughs> our chariot for the day and we will be painting our warband inside the Challenger. Splendid. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. And the only thing we need if we're going to be painting on a, a boat like this, which isn't quite as stable as the craft that we've been aiming for, <laughs> is a special paint station. You know, all the paints and everything's going to stay in one place. So, behold! My water paint station. Uh, to the uninitiated, it will, of course, look like a metal baking tray super glued to a float. Okay, yeah. So anyway, um, what you've got <laughs> is uh, all the models are magnetised, all the paints are magnetised. If anything goes wrong, if the boat goes upside down... <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we lose the water pot, but... <laughs> you can always find more water. <laughs> um, cool. So before we can hit the water, we need to briefly backtrack in time. I'd painted up a test miniature in advance of today's challenge to see whether or not we could actually replicate a half-decent paint job I got in the comfort of my own home out in the rubber boat. Step one, choose the mini and clip it from the frame. Step two, clean flack and mould lines. Step three, grab a base and slot in the mini. Step four, secure mini to spraying implement, then shake. Ensure spraying area is clear. Spray. Deploy paintbrush. Deploy paint palette. Grab Mechanica Standard Grey for the black cloth undercoat, add a touch of water of course, and apply to the fabrics head to toe, all one colour like he's in his mini pirate PJs. Shake Doomball Brown, Rhinox Hide and mix them 
Then whack it on all the leathers you can find. Grab your null oil and prepare for intense satisfaction. Slather it on the PJs and on the leathers as well. Then watch paint dry. Grab Scrag Brown and undercoat the shield and the hilt of the sword. And then grab Dawnstone and paint the blade of the sword. And if you're asking why I'm doing non-metallic metals, I need yellows for my second colour in the challenge, and yellow goes in non-metallic metal gold. Next is Bugman's Glow to undercoat the flesh. Next step, get bored, grab train, go to local wargaming store, play games, lose games, buy pizza, buy drinks, eat pizza, drink drinks, wake up slightly hungover, then make a glaze using Lamia Medium and Null Oil, hoik up a wee bit of glaze, and start to develop the shape in the cloth and the graduated low lighting by glazing, and glazing, and glazing, and glazing, and glazing. Over and over again, with each layer being more glazed than the last. Then when you've had just about as much glazing as you can stomach, go back to Mechanica's standard grey to redefine the light areas on the tops of the cloths to stop you from tearing your own eyes out. After that brief respite, we're back to glazing, and glazing, and glazing, and oh god kill me. Next step is to regret life choices. Then we're back to highlighting, this time using a 50-50 mix of Dawnstone and Mechanica's standard. Apply in a more focused way around the tops of the folds. Gradually add more Dawnstone to concentrate the highlight and for some reason pull focus on the curves of his ass. Pro tip, remember to highlight non-ass parts of the model as well. Then go back to glazing again to atone for the sins of a past life. Use pure administratum grey for select fine highlights. You can then breathe a sigh of relief because the nightmare that is the cloth is now over. Let the nightmare that is the leathers begin. Start with a layer of Mournfrank brown anywhere that's not in shadow. Next, we get a 50-50 mix Scrag Brown and Mournfang Brown highlight on the leathers. Pet the cat to distract from the inevitability of the next step being back to glazing. This time using Mournfang Brown to build up the low lights of the gold on the shield. We then invite Rhinox High to the party and the whole sorry process starts again. Then go up the chain in opposite corners using Avalanche Sunset. Continue this chain with Irial Yellow and Dawn Yellow. Complete delicate black lining process using Rhinox Hide to paint a thin line between the body of the shield and the spike in the middle, and realise the whole thing looks quite a lot like a straw hat. Acknowledge that the gold is about as done as it's going to get. So now for the sword blade then, glazing the low lights first with Mechanica Standard Grey, and the highlights with Administratum Grey. Bring in whites for the highlights and blacks for the low lights. Complete an edge highlight using Dawnstone and mixing in white at the lightest points. Reward yourself for completing the metals by petting Boo. Use Reichland Flesh Shade to shade the flesh. Remember you forgot to do the final leather highlights with pure Scrag Brown, so head back and do that. Highlight the intimidatingly chiselled pecs and other exposed skin features using Cadian Flesh Tone and then Kisler Flesh. Fill in mouth hole with Null Noil and then paint in teeth with a shabty bone. Dot eyes with white. Do hair with whatever hair colours you have closest to hand. Notice that his hair looks a lot like that thick flat spaghetti they do. I think it's called fettuccine. Apply PBA to the base and spread it all around. Do the gravel dip. Lazily stab Wraithbone, then Seraphim Sepia onto the base. Dry brush on a shafty bone. Paint the rim with Xandri Dust, which looks a bit weird because it's extremely similar in tone and hue to the basing materials on the top of the base. And usually the rim is a really good opportunity to frame the miniature by using a darker or at least a more contrasting color. But I really want it to look beachy in this model. So that's why I've gone with that. Liberally apply matte varnish, but not too liberally because I did, and my model has come out looking cloudy or chalky. Finally, the most satisfying moment, apply tufts to taste. There we go. Does it look great? No, it doesn't. But it sets the bar high enough that repeating this process five times over in the back of a rowboat in one day is going to be challenge enough. I am, however, going to say that we don't have to base the models in the boat because the drying time for the basing materials alone is prohibitive. So challenge set, let's head back to the canal where we're just about ready to hit the water. There once was a boat, it was a little bit wonk. The name of the boat, it was the HMS Bonk. The water was flat, but the boat was shit. Row, my fellow nerds, row. Soon may the rowboat sink, that thing's going in the tree. Off. <laughs> Casting off. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Oh, the knees are uh, an issue. <laughs> oh god, the knees are an issue. <laughs> Every time. Oh Jesus, I'm sorry, I've got to. Right, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. This is, a good this is the poo one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh God! <laughs> it's far too small. All right, well, uh, first things first, we need to spray them. Right. This is my favorite thing ever. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, what should we go for? Is Andrew just? Why not? Because that's the only one I can reach. It, it, it doesn't, I can't stress this enough. It doesn't matter. <laughs> So yeah, uh, we're gonna start painting the cloth in Mechanica Standard Grey. In the first shift, Chris would be painting and I would be rowing, but we'd be swapping at intervals down the canal. How's the uh, tray working out there? It's pretty good, the, yeah. the, mo the mobile floating pay station? Yeah. I mean, all pay stations are mobile to a certain extent, I guess, but... <laughs> but not floating. Exactly. To be honest, I didn't even think we'd actually reach this point, being that we were painting and underway. It was actually quite surreal, as apparent in our moments of self-awareness. Just every now and again, I just realise what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I see. I this, see how it is. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> but you know what? The HMS Bonk is really holding up. It is. I'm proud of it. I'm proud of us. <laughs> Let's go. Chris was making short work of the Mechanica Standard Grey for the black cloth undercoat, but he'd not painted Middle Earth miniatures before, and I was intrigued to see what he thought. <laughs> so, what, what do you think of the models, Chris? Um. Shit. I can do it. <laughs> All right, yeah, <laughs> pirates. They, they're supposed to have guns. These guys have got bows. What's the point? Very true. Very true. I must admit, it's a bit of a shame I got Corsairs of Umbar. I'm sorry to the people who love them, but they're just not my favourite models in the range. And I've been trying to get Chris into Middle Earth strategy battle game for quite a long time, and only in part in revenge for him having gotten me into wargaming in the first place. So it felt like a missed opportunity. But still, we work with the tools we're given. <laughs> Here we go, the liquid talent. Fuck yes, this is the most satisfying point in the process. Fuck yes! As well as this was working, this setup was not without its dangers. Oh. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> reverse! I'm trying to reverse direction. Reverse the oars. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one thing that's, that's missing, I think, from general hobby content. Yeah. It's impending collisions. Oh, that one wasn't quite dry. <laughs> <laughs> the not oars mixed a little bit. I don't care. <laughs> Everyone else is going to have these. Um, oh, it's a kind of a treat. He's going to present these like immaculately painted models. He's they, they, you put thought and care into how to do it. And I'm like, oh, I painted mine in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no tissue, so I'm using my hand to uh, make sure that it's all good. So the sword, you should undercoat uh, Thunderhawk blue if you can. Okay. The, the shields or the bucklers are all going to be gold. Uh, and so if you could base those, um, oh, cr Scrag Brown. I based them Scrag. Scrag Brown. Yeah. It does look like a hat. It does the look buckler. like a hat. <laughs> what kind of shit ass buckler is that? <laughs> so the blacks were based and washed and Chris was moving on to basing the non-metallic metal colors. We'd also covered about half a mile, which I was choosing to be impressed by. Inevitably, the conversation soon turned to whether or not Chris was tempted to get a Middle Earth force of his very own. I, I am tempted to get one, like to, to try something. Oh, I'd love that. I'm not sure what, like, but I'm possibly thinking dwarves. I would love the Iron Hills ones, but that, they're bloody expensive. <laughs> they are expensive, but I wasn't going to be giving up that easily. Erebor are very cool. Yeah. And yeah. the dwarves of, um, uh, whatever the fuck the one's called, Kazadum. Very cool. <laughs> Kazadum, can you? Yeah, I'm in home. Sorry, let's listen to that noise one more time. Yeah, I'm in home. That is the noise of a person who is uninterested, but can't quite find the polite way to tell you to stop going on about it. I don't know, the, the models don't inspire me as much. Oh, right there, bloody called it. And before I could even think of another argument to go on the offensive with, the conversation had returned to the painting and with news of a problem. So I can't find the Thunderhawk blue, so I'm gonna have to go with the Shrag Brown on the shield. Oh, no, we didn't bring it. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely not my best work. It, it was never going to be. If you did your best work, in a boat <laughs> on the canal, I would be flabbergasted. You have to come back here every weekend and always do your painting. <laughs> it's like guaranteed a slayer sword, like yeah, in the next yeah. Golden Demon. <laughs> Best work or not, Chris had finished his first shift admirably, which meant we needed to swap over, and that was a very delicate operation. <laughs> oh, I'm impressed so far. This is progress. He's making progress. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out. Yes. Look at that. <laughs> Alright. Oh, I can stretch my legs. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's so deflated. Yeah. It's uh, so deflated. 
Oh my god! Was it this deflated? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're gonna have to swap real quick because we we got we've got painting to do, okay? <laughs> we're gonna do it before it goes in. Oh my god, it's so deflated! <laughs> so with the boat apparently deflating and a huge amount of painting still to go, as we entered the next stint, the pressure was on. But I did still want to take a moment just to put to bed a question that had been itching at my brain ever since we got here. You know what I want to do? What's that? Okay. Oh! Look at that! <laughs> <laughs> and it's a good job the floating paint station worked because things were about to get a whole lot more difficult. That's hail! That's hail! Oh no! <laughs> oh my <laughs> oh, god! No, it's hailing! Okay, there okay, you go! <laughs> Sorry, we'll paint in the hail! <laughs> Things were no longer looking so rosy. It was becoming more complicated by the minute. What a lovely day. <laughs> yeah, let's go while we're that. Thank you very much. Oh, then that's, that's it. All right, come on, Chris, row us back to base. All right. <laughs> All right, how do you row? How do you row? <laughs> you know what? He wasn't exaggerating. I'm sure he won't mind me saying, but his rowing technique left a lot to be desired. Although, actually, he might mind me saying, come to think of it. Whilst Chris was struggling to keep the boat going in a single direction, I was just admiring the paint-based handiwork completed so far in the voyage. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? Sorry, we'll, we'll fill a skin and that'll help. So I started basing the skin, hoping somehow that would polish this nautically themed turd. I got that done, but before long it was time for another swap over. Painting in the back of the boat with absolutely no back support really works your core. There was sure to be a few more wobbly swap overs yet before the day was done. Right. How do I stand up? In general or in the boat? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Boy. Yeah, that's. Oh, good. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Christ. Right. It was at this moment that things took a bit of a turn. <laughs> <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I mean, that's... <laughs> Not ideal! <laughs> right, oh. If it's any consolation, the tray works flawlessly! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into the tray. <laughs> also, first, are you okay? <laughs> also, first, the tray. <laughs> the tray, Graham, the tray. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Is that how was it? <laughs> okay. I mean, it was. It was. Oh, no, one of my slippers must come up my sandals. I kicked off. <laughs> So we recovered the boat from that beautifully clean canal water. Then I did a pocket check to make sure nothing had been lost or ruined. Your car to buy. What do you think? Your, 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 your jacket's okay. Jacket's okay. Like your really glue is okay. <laughs> okay. Just oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing okay. Just your. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what was in these pockets. Square is it? So it's, it's, gone, it's gone now. Realistically, this brought the challenge to an unceremonious end. We'd need to pack up and get the boat back to the van. One will be not completely ended, there was still chance to squeeze in the pub. At least this was a welcome distraction from thinking about the diseases I might have contracted from my dip in the canal. So, how far did we get? Uh, well, this is the test mini, and uh, this is what we did on the canal. This problem is compounded by the fact that we have a group chat for this challenge and as I'm editing this, it is full of work in progress pics of fantastic display pieces by some talented creators. This makes me feel both embarrassed and a little ashamed. So if you want to see some fantastic Middle Earth projects come together, please do check out all of the other creators in the links. And if you want to hear someone whine about how they're not really that fond of Corsairs, then stick with Battle Camper. Remember that the Noble HMS Bonk was purchased by my contributors on Buy Me A Coffee, so, you know, if you have no way of conceptualising the value of money and fancy pissing it away on some ill-thought-through project, then please do feel free to donate, and thank you very much for watching. What's your name?
Is that a threat? 